Hey everyone and welcome to the April Sew Along. This month's Sew Along is called the Free Spirit Table Runner which is made up of these beautiful mandalas. This design comes in four different sizes, the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 and 7x7. It also consists of four different blocks which you can mix and match to create a variety of different mandalas. We really hope you have fun with this and we can't wait to see what you all create. Let's get sewing! We are starting out by stitching our batting to our stabilizer, then trimming the excess batting so none of it remains in the seams. You have probably noticed that for most of our designs we have been pinning the edges of the stabilizer on the outsides of the hoop. We find that this stops any movement in the stabilizer, especially if there's a lot of stitching and embroidery. This is completely optional, you do not have to do it. Moving on to your first piece of applique, stitch the placement line for piece two. Place your fabric A right side up on top of the hoop, completely covering the placement line and stitch down. A great tip when stitching down fabric is to use a tool to help flatten the fabric. This will help keep your fingers away from the needle. We sometimes use a plastic little spatula as seen in this video or a purple thing. This is the brand name of a tool. Once our first piece of applique has been stitched down, we are going to use our sharp applique scissors to trim the excess fabric along the inside edge. Do not trim any of the fabric in the seams. Now the following steps will be using the same applique technique, placement line, stitching the fabric down and then trimming. Simply just follow the correct instructions for the block you are making. In the instructions there are also diagrams for each block as well. This will help you identify which piece of fabric goes down next. After all of the applique pieces have been stitched into place, the satin stitch steps will begin. Again, please follow the instructions for these steps as well. When you have completed all of the stitching steps, remove your block from the hoop and trim the seams back to about half an inch. To reduce any bulk in the centre of the finished mandala, we suggest clipping the point off of each triangle block. We also suggest trimming about an inch and a half of stabiliser off from each edge of the point. Once you have all of your finished blocks, lay them out in your chosen order on your work surface. Have a play around with the blocks and get creative with your mandalas. Sew together one mandala at a time. Here you can see we are splitting the one mandala in two halves. This will make joining the triangle so much easier. Working with the first half of the mandala, place the first two blocks right sides together. Pin together along one of the long edges and using your sewing machine, stitch the two blocks together with a half inch seam. Take your time with this step, you want to make sure you are matching up all of the satin stitches.
Move over to your ironing board to give the seam on the back of the blocks and the front of the blocks a good press. Continue attaching the third block to the first half of the mandala, placing right sides together and then stitching together with a half inch seam. Once you have completed your first half, you can move on to the second half using the same method. Now that you have your two sewn halves, place them right sides together. Pin together along the straight edge and making sure you have matched up the centre perfectly. Move the two halves over to your sewing machine and stitch the two together using about a half inch seam. Take your time with this step, you want to make sure you're matching the centre up correctly and also make sure that you are matching up your satin stitches. Now move your mandala over to your ironing board and give the seams on the back and the front of the blocks a good press. Go ahead and sew together the remaining mandalas. For our table runner we made three full mandalas, but you can make yours longer or shorter, it's all up to you. We now need to attach the mandalas to each other. Place the first two mandalas right sides together. Pin along one of the edges and then move over to your sewing machine to stitch the two together using about a half inch seam. Repeat this same process to attach the remaining mandalas. Give all of the seams on the back of the blocks a good press, as well as the fronts of the blocks. We are now up to the final stage. Place your table runner on top of your backing fabric. This will be fabric F, right sides together. Pin around the perimeter of the table runner, pinning the two layers together. At one of the ends of the table runner, leave a gap of about 5 inches. Depending on what size block you make, this gap may need to be made smaller. Move over to your sewing machine and using about a half inch seam, stitch the front of the table runner to the backing. When you come to a corner or a point, simply just leave your needle down. Lift the machine foot and rotate the table runner. Put the machine foot back down and then continue stitching. Now that you have your two layers sewn together, with your rotary cutter and ruler, trim back the seams to about a quarter of an inch. Where the gap is, we like to keep this slightly wider, trim back this seam to about half an inch. Also make sure you are clipping your corners and points. Turn the whole table runner out the right way through the gap. Take your time here and be careful not to rip any of the stitching. To make the corners more defined, we like to use some sort of pointy implement to help push these corners out. And then to finish off the table runner, you can either use fabric glue or hand stitch the gap closed. And there you have it, your beautiful free spirit table runner is now complete. We hope you all enjoyed this month's sew along, because I know that we did. We also can't wait to see all of the photos of your creations. Happy sewing everyone!